Welcome back to another GGF video and today we are going to be doing yet another unboxing. Seems to be as of recent, I've been doing quite a few of these videos like the first look videos, the unboxings, mainly because in this new studio I do have the flexibility to do uh, multiple filming locations at once. So I can be working on like a review, a custom build with a loop. They normally take a week or so. So previously where I was limited on space, I could just do one at a time. Now I can sneak in a few unboxings mainly to get some more content going on the channel just so you guys aren't waiting weeks at a time for me to do like a case review or a custom loop for a time that's built because they do take a bit of time and mainly these unboxings or quick overviews first looks however you call them mainly going to be things on items that i think are going to be interesting new items like i'm not going to go over every single motherboard i have uh things that are already out of old probably just new stuff and this thing here i've been really interested to check out you can probably see the packaging thermal grizzly if you want to know thermal grizzly devourer he basically runs that now this is a very interesting product you may not know but thermal grizzly are now getting into the custom water cooling uh, area so they're going to be doing things like blocks this is a gpu block here it is for the rog 5090 astral which is this one here big shout out to rog for sending me this to use in some upcoming builds first off this will be on a move that out of the way on a combitex build i've got a heap of things to talk about on this block so basically yep it's being done by thermal grizzly they're going to have things like fittings uh cpu blocks gpu blocks we're going to see blocks for i've got information on which upcoming blocks they're going to be focusing on the 5090 Supreme Master Palette and the 5080 Astral as well. Then you're going to be focusing on the AM5 uh, CPU block. I kind of think it was the right move to go with the AM5 first rather than Intel, probably because of obvious reasons. Uh, then I said fittings, they're going to have all of these on display at Computex, not all of the blocks. This will probably be the main block um, they're going to get out of the way first. So let me just rip this open. I haven't even opened this yet. I wanted to see what my first impressions were. Uh, some things when I do an unboxing, I do uh, open it first to have a look to make sure it's sort of okay and everything. But I wanted to see what see what my first impressions would have been like on something like this because I've been doing water cooling for a very long time and I always love doing custom water cooling. So seeing something like this is actually really interesting to me. Obviously packaging is not final, you wouldn't receive it like this. Uh, I'll talk about the different types of interface materials you do get a little bit later on. Now this thing is heavy. I've got all the dimensions here, 2.1 kilograms for this block. So yes, very heavy. Can I just get this out like this? Alrighty, so let's get that in there. Look at that. That just looks insane. Now I'm just not saying that because this is new. It is a very high performance water block. Obviously, I'm not gonna be doing testing in this video. I will only have a few days to get this build done before I ship it out to Computex. So I'm not gonna get much testing done, but once I get the build back, I've got some other projects. I will be doing a full uh, Delta Mate is what they're calling the water cooling line. So I'll be doing a full uh, Delta Mate, no doubt, in some upcoming builds. That'll be like CPU block, GPU block, fittings, and they've also got RADs uh, coming a little bit later on. So hopefully by the end of this year, obviously it's gonna take time. A lot of these products take a lot of time to engineer and develop and test, so just can't get this done overnight. So probably by the end of the year, hopefully we can see the full lineup. So before I talk a little bit about this directly i want to talk about how this all came apart so basically the lead designer from ek so the lead designer engineer from ek joe he's now moved over to thermal grizzly so he was pretty much the brains behind ek when it came to their quantum lineup all of that uh quantum talk that's where he came in did all that he's now left ek he's now with thermal grizzly so he's been working day and night to start producing their water cooling parts now they were going to have their fittings ready for the build I was going to use, but unfortunately they've been a bit delayed. They will be shown at Computex, but at the moment we've just got this block now. So he's been working on this. Now some special finishes on this block. Let's see 
if I can get this. So it's gonna be a dual finish design. Actually, just let me go and get a screwdriver so I can pull this apart and we can see the different dual finishes. Now, before I actually pull this apart, one really cool feature, which I think is, I wouldn't say game changer, but I just don't know why no one has ever thought of this. So this comes on a full physical PCB. Now, I wouldn't say it's a working PCB, but it's like a dummy PCB. You can see it there. So that is actually to size, to scale. It's not just in there for transport. Now, if I slide, oh, slide my Singularity test bench in here, might be a little bit big. Let's get this in. So if you know that you want a 5090 Astral, you're waiting for the price to drop, you're waiting for one to come in stock, you can purchase this block when it's available and you can slot it in your system like so. Let's move it down a slot so it's easier to get in. RGB cable might be in the way. Right, so I've now slotted that in. You could literally run your loop, route your loop, do everything you need to do. You could even uh, run your system with the pump. You can pressure test it, get everything ready to go. Then when your GPU arrives, just dismantle your block. Then away you go, your loop is pretty much, your loop is pretty much done. So I really do like how it comes on that uh, PCB. Um, not saying that you have to do that, you might already have your 5090, but I do think that is a really nice touch just to have that feature there. More about the aesthetics, I guess, before I pull it apart, I am getting my fingerprints over it. All metal design, of course. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything less. For the materials, we're looking at copper, nickel plated, of course. Brass will be the terminal. Now there's two types of terminals. One, which is the I opted for the double pass through. So you've got top and then you've got it directly on the bottom like so. So if you were running, say it would be normally like this in your system, you can run your ports out this way or in this way. And then there's another terminal that just shoots it straight out the end. Those ones look pretty clean as well. So that's an option you can go for those. The top is PMMA, which is surface hardened, which is an acrylic. Now, when I did have a conference call with Joe, it was going to be glass. They've had to push that back to acrylic for now, or at least on the 5090 Astral, just to get this out. But future cards, they're aiming to bring that out in glass for the top, which will be cool. Aluminum for the exterior, which is this area here. This comes in no contact with the actual coolant. So this is just the cover. There's no need to make that out of anything like stainless or anything. Aluminum is good for that. And then the O-ring is EPDM, which is standard for pretty much all O-rings. Now, one thing I do really like to see are the O-rings that are all inside this block. So there's gonna be no coolant bleed. So if the guys just did it, so a lot of older blocks have the O-rings that normally just go around the die. So when it goes through the flow, you get that seepage through different areas. And if you have a lot of large flat areas in your block, when you get that seepage over the other side, it just doesn't look good because that's not really the normal path for coolant to flow. But this one has O-rings everywhere, which looks really nice. Uh, dimensions of the block, if you're interested, I'll throw this actual uh, little image I got sent up. So the length is 282 millimeters, width is 135, and the height is 28 millimeters. And as, as I said before, just over the two kilograms for that. Port spacing is 28 millimeters, and the number of slots is 1.5, and then it takes 76 milliliters of coolant, which probably doesn't really matter so much to you. And then the logo is on the side, Delta Mate, nothing too over the top. And then if we flip it around, there's nothing on there, which I do like to see. There's no huge branding, anything like that. But while we're on this side, let's take this off. Now there are some pretty cool features on this block about the research that went behind the uh, fins for the die uh, for the cold plate. Also, it does some special cooling for your 12 volt high power connector. There are pads for that. Also the included uh, thermal pads, the putty and so on is, uh, is also pretty high end as well. So this is a high performance block. I don't have prices on anything yet. Hopefully maybe Combitex when I actually am covering the Thermal Grizzly uh, booth so I can probably talk a little bit more about on more of their products there and then maybe we might have some prices or something there is that that okay 
that there. I'm not sure how well that's focusing. Standard backplate, it feels nice. Here is your PCB. See if I can pull this out like that. And it's got some information as well, like uh, thermal pad sizes, thicknesses, all of that. If you want to go with things like putty, it's got things like the, the nut and the thread sizes and all that. Really nice just to have that. And look at that, we've also got the engineers, the machinists. Let me get that right up. And I believe there were gonna be some Easter eggs as well, but I won't go over all of that now, but just some information on there, which is just that little bit extra. Now, as you can see, I've never seen a block like this. So as I said before, it has a dual finish. So it's machined twice. It's once glass bead blasted. So as you can see, it's got this real nice matte or satin look. And then it is machined again, because obviously the mirror finish on these is probably gonna do better cooling than like the matte. So then they've machined it again to get this mirror finish. Now let me flip this this way. See how well that picks up. See how it's just the mirror. So that looks really nice and it just feels really good quality as well. Now moving down to so the dual finish, it's all done in house. So that's how they can work on this because it'd probably be very, very expensive if they were to outsource this. So it's all done in house in Germany. Now the cold plate, let me flip this around. You actually cannot really see it that much. So anyone with uh, a dirty loop, uh, some blocks you can completely see a lot of the cold plate. So if you get little bits of black bits or a little bit of tubing and stuff in your cold plates, you cannot really see any of this, so I guess that's not gonna to be too bad. Over time in your loop, it's always gonna pick up stuff. So with over two years of experience of machining the micros, which is the uh, Roman has that direct die block. So he's been doing that for two years and he's been pushing the envelope to achieve uh, finer and finer slots. So as you can see, the slots are right in there. So the best I've got so far is about 0.1 millimeter for the distance between each little fin. But they've worked out this block has 0.2 millimeters and they've worked out that is the best for the overall performance. So they've tested with uh, lower, they've tested it with more, and 0 0.2 uh, is the best they found for uh, thermal performance. So of course, it's a full coverage block. It's gonna be cooling all of your VRMs, your VRAM as well over here, and then of course the die, and then some of those extra little areas as well. I've already mentioned the pre-installed uh, PCB, which I think is sweet. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this. If this is something uh, you want to see on all of them, you don't really care, but I think it's really good that you can probably pick up this block when it comes. And then when you do decide to choose your card, because a lot of the times it's the other way around. People choose a card, hoping someone's going to make a block for it. And if they don't make a block for it, you are stuck with that card. So now you can pick up the block and you always know the card is going to be there. It's just a matter of how fast you can get it, if it's in stock and if it's the right price that you wanna pick it up for. Now, let me talk about the supplied thermal interface material. So obviously Thermal Group Grizzly, wouldn't say it's gonna make it easy for them, but it's handy that they already have all this uh, stuff on hand. They don't have to outsource the thermal paste they wanna add, the thermal pads. So they've added the Duranaut, really high performing thermal paste, uh, which is good. So that'll be for the uh, GPU die itself right there. They were also including putty advance. Thermal Grizzly does the thermal putty. So it comes in two different, uh, sorry, three different levels. Like uh, I think it's in basic, the advance, and then the pro. They've done the advance. And I think the advance does something like a 3.5 degree uh, performance over decent pads. So the putty is, you're gonna put putty on like the memory over the VRM and so on. It just gives that a little bit more performance over using standard thermal pads. And then we also have the minus pads as well. I didn't seem to get the putty by the looks of it. I don't think it's in there because this is a sealed uh, Duranaut pack. But yeah, I've been told that it will come with the putty you can use. You can probably uh, use these pads as well if you don't wanna use the putty. Uh, putty gets very, very messy. It's basically like thick sort of thermal paste. So once you put it on your, once you put it on your card over the memory, over everywhere, it's really gonna sink in and get into all those holes. So basically you want it on there, leave it on there, and then you're done. These minus pads, 
can be used, I guess, as well for like the memory and all that. Like I don't have any manuals yet, so I can only assume that you could use those and even on the back plate as well. And I believe they're not going to be cut to size. It's going to be up to you guys to measure and cut that to the right size you need. Now, one other interesting area I do want to talk about is maybe it might be these two here that there's actually cooling for the 12 volt high power. So you all know your 12 volt high power connector, which is this one here. They do get hot, quite warm. So it's gonna be hard to see how this looks with it fully dismantled, not on the card. But once it's in, it's meant to cool the traces and pins in directly with the cold plate and the back plate. So I'm assuming there would be like a pad on the bottom. There would be a pad that goes on the top here. I can see this little pad spot here. So that would probably go there. And once it's in, from what I've been told, you can gain about 12 degrees. Uh, nothing to do with the block, but your 12 volt high power uh, connector is gonna run about 12 degrees cooler. Now that's quite a bit. That was when they were testing it about full 600, 600 and above watts. So for 12 degrees cooler, I think that's pretty good. But I think that's mainly it on this video. I'll try and get some close-ups of like the fins inside more, try and get some of the finish if you can really see that because I think it does look really nice. Nothing I've really seen before, the finish inside, and then you've got the mirror finish on all of the contact point, points, which is nice. And then once again, that PCB, the back plate, and then all of the interface materials. But anyway, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Thermal Grizzly for sending this out. I think I was only one of a few to get this. I will be throwing it in the Computex build. And once again, thanks to ROG for sending out the 5090 Astral to use in some upcoming builds. And thank you for you guys for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.